Wednesday morning, actually Valentine's Day. Police are coming in a minute. I remember when the bikes were on the field, I don't know, not last Saturday, Saturday before, just before I went to Ireland, January actually, wasn't it, I think? Um, there's a bit of confusion about whose police force it falls under. So the field's in Cheshire, but the, the, the motorbikes have come from um, Merseyside. So anyway, I'm going to hopefully go up with the police and we're going to talk about this border issue and have a look at the damage that they've done. I feel like I'm 12 because I'm excited getting in a police car. <laughs> Can I press the button to make it flash? <laughs> you can tell we're by the airport. Here a plane taking off. This is obviously where the kids have been playing in the woods and then something burnt out over here. It looks like an Audi. Q5 or something, is it? Look massive, but no, it's a Ford, isn't it? Focus or a Fiesta. Stone in it. Look at how long that's been there. Got one there. We got another one there. And then one in there. panel van like a people carrier or something we have some delightful neighbours don't we that's like a seven seater oh we've got a motorbike as well What's been damaging the field? Let's have a look what this is over here. Here's a good rally track, it's actually got gravel in it. They've obviously come off the track there, got stuck, and just torched it. Or it's been on fire there and they've shoved it into there with something else so they can get past. Hear the woodpecker? Can't hear it now. There you go. We've now found another bike. So in, we've got a bike there, a bike there, a car there, a van, just, so you can't see it through the trees, and then another burnt out car there. So what have we got? Five burnt out vehicles, no, one, two, three, four. Yeah, five burnt out vehicles in, in what? Not even a quarter of an acre. I mean, there could be all sorts in here, to be fair. I'm no expert, but I think that is another motorbike under there somewhere. And you can obviously see the wheel, but that looks like the frame in some of the engine, and that's obviously catching all that driftwood. So, I think there's three cars, three motorbikes. This is just some of the damage that the bikes and the motorbikes do. But on the plus side, I found a spade in the woods. A £10 B&M bargain spade. That was a, a worthwhile visit. Um, they've now, this is obviously Merseyside, so now they've passed it on to Cheshire Police to remove all the vehicles out of there, but I mean, there'll be more, there always is. Right, I've changed the exposure on my camera to see if it makes the straw a bit more yellow, but I suppose it's making everything else a bit funny. But this, uh, the top sort of that much now has got a bit of, bit of damp in it, so probably another day. Again, we're only giving it spur heat between drying batches of chip. So, if we'd have had 48 hours of non-stop, I think we'd have done it all, but yeah, the exposure's well wrong now, isn't it? Can I change it while I'm on the phone? No, I don't know. Yeah, um, yeah, it's not good at all, is it? That's better. Yeah, no, it's obviously 
working. We, we knew it would, it's because obviously it drives wheat, which is a lot denser uh, and chip, but yeah, it's just juggling between keeping everything else running and drying at the same time. But I think we put over 40 bales in there, so uh, it's a fair amount of straw, really. We could have dried, these are some bottom bales, so it's got mud stuck to them, but you could have dried them still in the bale, but because they could have been a bit flaggy in the middle, because when they've been baled and it's damp, they all start to stick together. Then when you try and spread them out for straw, for bedding or by hand they'd just be like flags you could flag the yard of it so that's why we burst them open with a spreader bale spread them dry them and then bale them back up will be absolutely perfect obviously we rebuilt the engine this 78 so it's had an oil change and then we just run it for a bit and then now it's getting some fresh oil again and then hopefully it should be good for work get its new boots on and off we go in a basket with some tools the grain dry has been overflowing so we're just going to adjust the uh, the stop in it that tells it when to turn off. So that's why it's overflowing on this side. The tube is worn and it's coming out of the tube rather than cascading to the other side. So I could move the float switch, which is that thing there that you can't really see. It looks kind of like um, a whisk upside down. You can't see it, can you? but it probably won't help because this is splashing out of here, out of this hole, which is pretty, pretty big. So I don't know if I can stick something over it for now, even if it's just duct tape. I don't know. Definitely needs a new center tube, this dry though. It's, it is properly worn out. The agitator come on part at harvest. There's the joining link from it. It was hooked one of them holes yeah I don't know whether we can perhaps weld something on that for now it's paper thin though that's quite thick we could weld that and hammer it round or do we just cut a hole in the other side to let it out that way a bit more even yeah I could just cut a hole here with the angle grinder let it splash out this side then it should still fill even because as long as it's come out through the main pile, it won't really matter. And at the moment, we're only using it for, for cooling and conditioning. I've just knocked all the bits and bobs, bits of leaves that have been stuck on there off down there. Yeah, see that? It looks like a whisk, that fork thing that spins. That turns and measures the resistance of the grain. So if I cut a hole in this side so it flows this way as well, at the same rate it's spilling out that side, hopefully it should even itself up. That dust. <laughs> don't know what's happened here but them things for draining oil haven't saved any mess have they it's like a trail I thought the idea of buying them was we'd have less mess in the workshop anyway get the grind I'll go and cut a hole hopefully Let that grain out of there now and it should be even as it fills the top. Turn it on now and see what happens. I've tried to guess the square area of that hole, them holes. And as long as it's above that auger, it should empty okay. But you can see the screw inside. Or can you? Probably not. Just wipe that. So there's the over there, pretty badly worn out. 
Yeah, the problem we've got now is now throwing out of that hole I've just cut over the top and then down there. Like, and it's still not coming near that central thing. No! Oh. Unless it was not quite as full, perhaps it wouldn't bounce along the top. Just see it cascading down the side there now. So much for a quick fix. I think it might be a job now for a ratchet strap. A bit too big for baler twine perhaps. Yeah, it's been overflowing this side, but now it's throwing it down here. It's raining. Oh! Need a good mucking out in here. Right, old bin. Couple of ratchet straps down there. See so if we can cut something to make a jacket to fit around that tube, like we did in the center, really. But as soon as we've got all this wheat cooled, we'll move them, move all these bags of seed, pull out them concrete panels, pull the dryer out, pull the yellow tube out, put a new one in, and put a new central spiral in cut the top and the bottom off the bin so we've got a tube we're going to slice it now wrap it round as far as we can i have to cut some notches out and then hopefully cover most of the worn out bit and the bit that i've cut open right i think that should work got that nice and tight is that well, it's got to rub on that bearing isn't it oh. Off that burning should be all right because of the ramp on that it was hard to get the strap round it but i think it's got it you know all those people that say they want a job on a farm there's no skittles and fence it's more than with these dusty horrible dirty things I forgot to put my boiler on this morning. That's better now. It's not overflowing that side or that side. And that stirrer is hitting the pile. Bit hard to see for the dust. But it's working fine now. This tube on the hoover's worn out. So I'm going to undo that clamp there. The Allen key's on chop it here because there's plenty of slack in it and then re-put it on hopefully that's better now i've cut that damaged bit out morgan's just brought the digger back from brook house ready for chipping tomorrow so fix that joint but that one that's gone as well so blowing the dust out like i say it's not all skittles and fence These lights have been flickering and this is full of water because it's been running in that conduit. Fill the plug, the, not the plug, the socket. That was full of uh, hot water. It's been running in the conduit inside. So we've backed the conduit off now so we can't get in it. Birthday bumper's gone up by over 300 pounds, I think, in the last uh, 24 hours or at least 250. Anyway, Melanie Dobbs Dobson is 32, that was last week and Annie Brown's birthday is next week John Hughes is on there, Jack Turner's 14 Jeff Brown's on there, Jim Stokers is 55, Mark Woodman's on there Charlotte Wardman is 17 Tim Cortis, I think it's pronounced as 67 Lee Curry is 47, I think it's Lee who we met in um, John O'Groats, no Land's End uh, J Paul James Fitzmorris is on there and of course it's Joe Seals' birthday today so today's quiz question is who watches look at the snake of my hair. Today's quiz question is who else watches Joe Seal's channel? Let me know in the comments. And also as well, if you made it this far through the video, click like because I had a meeting with YouTube today. 
um, every few months we have like a meeting and they talk about the channel and different things. Um, one of the things they talk about is um, it's good for a channel growth if people click like. So if you've got the time, press the like button. Anyway, that's all for today. I'm going to go in and get a shower, get rid of all these dusty clothes and um, yeah, have a quiet night in, I think. So thanks for watching and I'll see you later. Before I go quickly, if anyone forgot any Valentine's presents, like someone that turned up before to pick a hoodie up, you can always say that Ian's forgot to post it. So blame Ian if you want. So if you've not got your loved one a hoodie or a hat, that is why it's Ian's fault. And also one was spotted in Niagara Falls, because we'll look at this.